Thank God you're here because today's video is all about how to be friends with Danish people. Now, in other videos, we have talked about the fact that you'll probably become friends with foreigners in the beginning of your time living in Denmark, but eventually you will become friends with Danes. So you should know some things on how to socialize with them that may be different than the culture in which you come from. Now, one of the important things to note is that we're going to be talking in some broad generalizations. It's about the experiences that we've had here in Copenhagen and some of our friends as well. So if you have a different experience, either as a Dane who's made friends with foreigners or foreigners making friends with Danes, please share your experience in the comments below. We'd love to learn more. Other thing to make sure is that we want to make this video because there's so many things we see on the internet where people say that you can't become friends with Danes or they're cold and impossible to befriend. We don't think that's true and that's why we want to make this video. Yeah, that's right. And let's keep a couple things in mind as you start to become friends with Danish people. One, they've got a lifetime of friendship here. You're new, so you're competing with that as you arrive. The second thing is, it takes work to make friends anywhere you move to. So especially in another country, you have to remember that you're only going to get out what you put into it. And the biggest thing to remember is that whatever you read on the internet, Danes really are not cold people. They're not closed off. They're not private. They're just different than you might be. And they prefer having a few close friendships rather than a ton of acquaintances that they don't really know that well. So again, you're going to get out what you put in. After you watch this video, be sure to check out our playlist and other ways to build a social life in Denmark. But first, let's get this video started. Okay, so the first thing that we want to offer you as a piece of advice for becoming friends with Danish people is that you should go slow. For Danes, friendship is something that's earned, and it's earned over time. One of the best ways to become friends with people is to find some kind of organic way to hang out with them doing something that you enjoy in common. This could be joining a club or playing a sport. In fact, that was one way that we got to know people in Denmark because we joined uh, a dodgeball team and playing that sport with other Danes was really our entry into becoming friends with Danish people. Yeah, I think a key here is that also proximity doesn't necessarily mean you're going to become friends. So this is not a place where you're going to automatically be friends with your neighbor across the hall or even your coworkers. In a lot of cases, your coworkers are there to work and they'll be friendly with you in the office. But when they leave at four o'clock, they may not see you again until the next day. Yeah. So just to loop back again, this goes to the idea of going slow, that friendship is earned and you're not going to have necessarily friends out of obligation. That's not to say you won't become friends with your colleagues no. or that there aren't people who live next door to each other that are friends. It just means that it's not something you're entitled to. Another piece of advice for you is to remember that Danes are planners. Remember, this is a country where everybody knows the weak numbers and it's part of the planning system for everyone's lives. Realize that people like to plan ahead. And especially if they grew up near where you meet them, they may have a lot of family and friend obligations that they have to fit into their schedule as well. So realize you have to plan ahead and make plans with them. Yeah, I can remember some people that we met uh, early on while we were living here and it took three or four times to get some kind of hangout scheduled. And it wasn't because they were rejecting us. I mean, I know I may look like I'm used to rejection, but I'm really not. Uh, but it took a little bit of getting used to and realizing that, yeah, Danes are, very close with their families. Family is very important in Denmark. So Danish people, even though they may move a, an hour or two train ride away from where they grew up, are probably likely to go home for christenings or weddings or even just uh, a parent's birthday. And that's not something that always happens in the United States. It took us a little bit of time to get used to that, but it's actually pretty nice that they do that, I think. Yeah, and when it comes down to it, once you get in the plan, you are part of the plan. So realize that they'll keep their commitment with that as well. So once you're in the book, you're definitely going to have that hangout. Yeah, and we've even had encounters where some people have told us, I actually don't really have time for new friends right now. And as that sounds kind of rude, you have to remember that one, Danes are very direct, but they actually just save you a lot of time and effort of trying to find something to do. It's because you're new, they have a lot of other friends, and they're just saving you the effort that I may not be the best person to hang out with right now because I just don't have time. And speaking of planning, one way to send the wrong message is to be late or not be prompt when you are actually meeting up with uh, Danish friends. This is a very prompt country and if you are running late, it's beyond just the common courtesy that you let somebody know. In fact, it's considered very rude if you're more than, I don't know, it depends on the person, but 
five, 10, 15 minutes late can really send the wrong message. Yeah, and this was a big adjustment for us because in the US, like it's kind of culture to show up a little bit late. You never wanna be the first one at the party or you wanna make sure that you're fashionably walking in a couple minutes after the scheduled time. Obviously not if you have a fixed time, I'd say a restaurant where you're meeting for a reservation or a show or something like that. But to go to someone's home in the US, it's common to just show up a little bit after the time and that's not considered rude at all. In fact, showing up on time in some ways is rude. And we had to flip our script on this a little bit when early on we'd say, oh, come over for brunch at noon. Assume that we could be hopping in the shower at 10 past and no one would be there till 1230 anyways. We learned that the buzzer was going at 1159. Yep. So again, it's just adjustment. And if you come from a culture like in the US where it's quite common to be late to things, you better not send that impression in Denmark because it's a quick way to <laughs> start off on the wrong foot. And speaking about being on time, just make sure you realize that you're probably not going to get an invite to somebody's home right away. In Denmark and in all of Scandinavia, homes are quite a private thing. And so you're more likely to meet somebody early on out for a coffee or at a bar, having a beer or something like that. If you get a home invite, that means that you're in and it's a really intimate thing. Yeah, and we're not talking about parties because if you are invited to a party, that's a little bit different, but you also have to keep in mind that uh, they take great pride in their homes, so having you over is a bit special. Um, and if they invite you over because you have reached that point in your friendship, it's probably going to be for a dinner party or something like that. But also keep in mind, which is slightly different than in the United States, is that a dinner party at um, the home of Danish friends is going to be an all night affair. So it's something that you're going to show up to on time and you can expect to be having a glass of dessert wine well into the evening. And you may even stay sitting around and um, talking and, and uh, getting to know each other more well into the night. It's not a quickly scheduled um, in and out kind of thing. You're expecting a little bit more than dinner. And honestly, this is a little bit of a difference for us in the US where it's really common to say, oh, I'll swing in for a couple hours and have two or three different events that you wanna to go to during the, the course of the evening. In the US, that's not rude at all. In some ways, it's almost like, oh, thank you for making time for us in the middle of your busy schedule. In Denmark, that would be incredibly rude because if somebody invites you over, they assume that you're gonna be there for the night and it's gonna go late. Yeah, and that's not just dinner parties, that's all kinds of parties. So if you have multiple events going on on one night, you have to pick one and people will understand if you decline the other. The next one is big and it's very important as you make Danish friends. And that is that you need to have some thick skin to get along with Danes. It's actually something that I quite like about living in Denmark and that's that your friends are probably gonna make fun of you a little bit. In fact, if they like you, they definitely will make fun of you. Yeah, and it's important that you roll with the punches and be unafraid to make a joke back. Part of Danish culture is knocking people down a little bit if they're getting a little bit too high and mighty. And it's actually kind of a little bit of an affectionate way of showing that you're all in on this together, that nobody's better than anybody else in a really fun and positive way. Yeah, so it's never meant to be offensive. Um, it's just something that you kind of uh, should expect that there may be some gentle and sometimes even not so gentle ribbing when it comes to uh, being friends with Danish people. For example, right now our Danish friends may joke around that we look like a couple of Easter eggs. Go ahead, I know you were thinking it. Speaking of humor, one thing to know as you become friends with Danes is that the humor is going to be dark. Danes don't necessarily want to be PC. You need to be ready for the kind of jokes that you're going to hear. An important thing to remember is that intent matters. They like going dark, it's kind of part of the culture here, but realize it's not coming from a place of hate generally, it's coming from a place of trying to poke fun and kind of roll with the punches again. Yeah, so Mike is exactly right. You know, the humor is dark. It's not as PC as, uh, or politically correct as in the United States, but you also have to remember, you're not in the United States anymore or wherever you came from. Uh, so it's hard, but you do need to keep in mind that you can't impose your politics on other people uh, or your frame of mind or things that are offensive. You kind of have to adjust to where you are. Now that doesn't mean you can't find more like-minded friends. I'm just saying that in general, keep in mind that every culture is different. Yeah, and with this, there's certain things, like especially as you try to like punch back maybe a little bit, be aware when you talk about things like politics and things of that nature in Denmark because you don't know all the nuances here. And you may think you know having read some things online or watched some videos, but be careful when you go there because you're starting to talk about somebody else's culture. At the same time, 
as you're friends with people, if there's things that are really going too far, don't be afraid to speak up. Again, don't be afraid to be your own version of Danish directness and say what you need or what you feel in certain things, and your friends will respect you. It's not like people are jerks. That's right. So if you say something negative about Danish politics, you really don't have quite the place to do that because, well, you're not Danish. They're definitely going to let you know. So be prepared to expect that same courtesy from your Danish friends too. So with this, it can be sometimes a little bit challenging to figure out what can you and can't you talk about. So we offer to you right now a list of appropriate topics that you can have as you joke around with Danes. And it's super cheap. All you have to do is like this video and you can see it right now. The weather. Red. Sweden. Bikes. Boats. Home improvements. Princess Mary. Remelo. Lacrys. Did you like it yet? So another thing to keep in mind as you're becoming friends with Danish people is that a lot of social events do involve alcohol. Now, that doesn't mean that everything does. It doesn't mean that you can't get by uh, or find ways to socialize without drinking. But do keep in mind that uh, beer and a shot is very much part of Danish culture. Yeah, and this can be tricky, like we said, if you're if you're sober or not trying to drink as much, but it's not going to be a problem as long as you don't make it a problem. Uh, you can still go out to bars, you can make sure that you have non-alcoholic drinks. In fact, we've found a lot of people are actually drinking some non-alcoholic beer when they go to parties as a way to decide not to drink on a given night. Yeah, there's been a couple times where... Mm, I'll say one of our friends was going through something, but wanted to come over and socialize and be around a group. We had a few people over to our house, and the next morning I noticed that there were non-alcoholic beers in the refrigerator. I was kind of puzzled by this, and then asked uh, somebody else who was there the night before, and they said, oh yeah, so-and-so brought those. He didn't really want to get uh, too intoxicated because of everything going on. I understood right away, but it was still neat that um, a non-alcoholic beer was uh, the way of coping with that. So however it is that you do that, you'll find your way through it. But just keep in mind that alcohol is a big part of Danish culture. Yeah, and it includes when we go out to the bars that you can find, especially as you're making new friends, one of the amazing things that we have, Denmark's obviously an expensive place, except for shots. If you go to like a bodega or a small kind of dive bar, you can usually get 10 shots for 100 krona, that's like $15 US. Great way to be able to make friends and to come over with some good shots for them that they're going to enjoy. And if they have a licorice flavor to it, then you'll really have the Danes love you for that because they love anything with licorice. Yeah, so really I guess you can use that knowledge however you like to, if it's to help you make friends or to prepare yourself um, if you're not a big drinker. And finally, the biggest piece of advice is be yourself. We talked about how Danes really want authenticity. They want to have somebody that they actually know more deeply than superficial. So the more that you are yourself, the more that you're actually going to have other people like you. This is the kind of place where trying to fake yourself to fit in is gonna get seen right away. So bring your authentic self, bring whatever personality you come from, wherever you come from. They're gonna to wanna to see your Americanness or your Frenchiness or wherever you happen to come from. Yeah, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take an interest in Denmark, Danish culture. You know, find ways to connect, but don't lose who you are. Being authentic is super important and super valuable to Danes. More than, way more than in the United States. Yeah, this is the kind of place where, again, there's not necessarily a sense of having bar friends, people that you only see out a little bit and you really don't know that much of. That people really feel like, in some ways, making friends in Denmark is almost like dating. Like, you want to make sure that it's a relationship that you want to be a part of. But once you find one like that, you make really amazing relationships and you have incredibly beautiful friends. Yeah, and uh, we've said this before on our channel, but it bears repeating. Um, saying something like, how are you doing, is <laughs> a perfect metaphor for not just something that can confuse Danes or send the wrong message, but in America, and I think even in the UK, how do you do or how are you doing, is a very common phrase. But it's a good metaphor for the fact that you shouldn't ask questions uh, that you don't really want an answer to. Now, Americans use this as a greeting, but really, if you're asking that question, you should be prepared for an actual answer. You are actually asking somebody something personal. And it's a good metaphor for how to go about your relationships with Danes because don't ask that question if you don't really mean it and you don't really want to get to know somebody. Well, thank you guys so much for being here with us. We super appreciate you watching this video. Make sure you give it a like if you didn't already and subscribe to our channel so that you can get all of our cool content. We drop new videos every week, so if you hit the bell, you'll be notified when they come out. We really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you for being a part of our YouTube community and being our friends.